take it or break it factor in a relationship, it, it's gotten, it's given, being given far too much importance, you know. I mean, it's just an animal function, you know. It's, it's, it's not the be-all and end-all of existence, you know, although you would think it was the way some people's attitudes are. But really, sex is, uh, it's, compared to spiritual life, it's really not all that, that it's cracked up to be, you know. The, the only reason sex has become so important is because people have no spiritual pleasure. In the absence of spiritual pleasure, sex might seem like a big deal. Uh, but once you taste spiritual pleasure, it's like, you know, what, this tickle that lasts about, you know, 30 seconds? Why should I be interested in that? Why would I want to put, invest a lot of energy in that? I mean, you know, it's like a sneeze. Maybe you need to do it once in a while just to clear out, you know, clear out some energy, you know, move some energy or something. But, you know, it's not something that you obsess about. <laughs> and, uh, uh -huh. yeah? Uh, Krishna and Radha are engaged in a conjugal relationship. Ah, yes. And so they're making love. Uh huh. And they're generating love, or they're yeah. emanating love through the process of making beautiful love. Yeah. So, how that, does that translate? I mean, does Krishna get to have make love to Radha, I and mean, we we're, we're just out of love? <laughs> well, because Radha and Krishna are they're perfect god and goddess. They're in spiritual forms. They're not like rotting bags of meat and bones. You know, I mean, if you start thinking about what this material body is, you know, I mean, like half of our weight is just in stool. Um, the, the body is full of mucus and all blood and all kinds of nasty stuff, bile and, and you know, there's more microorganisms, there's more bacteria in our digestive system than there are cells in our body. Well, well, why don't we just purify our consciousness and kill ourselves and be done with it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the body's going to fall off anyway. <laughs> the body's going to fall off naturally huh? in time. It's going to happen. But I mean, the, you know, if you ever, if you tasted what making love with Krishna is like, you would never want to make love with, a, with another a, a material body. Huh? If, you, if you ever tasted spiritual love making, you know, it's like that's, that's it. That's the end of any attraction to this material body. Well, you know, it's it's what we got here. You know, I've got to make the best of the best of it. Well, that's problem. why I said earlier, if a person had never tasted spiritual ecstasy, they might think that sex was something worthwhile. Well, you say sex, but I mean, sex is just the, the reproductive function. It's just a body. If you refer to it as a purely biological function, as a primitive perpetuation of the species, an animalistic act. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, then, but but making love. If you, if you love somebody and you're... We get these two things confused all the time because we're in, because we're in material condition of consciousness. Um, there is no love in this material world because everything here is temporary. Love, for, first of all, has to be spiritual and if it's spiritual, it has to be eternal. If it's eternal, it cannot be based on the material body or on a material relationship because those relationships have a beginning and an end. Uh, see, first of all, we're confused about what spiritual really is. Uh, if we understood what spiritual really is, we would understand that love means a total intimate sharing of consciousness. And that is only possible between the soul and God. It's not possible between two human beings. What we have is an imitation of love. It's a counterfeit. Uh, it's just, it's a, a phony kind of love. It's conditional. Uh, real love is unconditional and it's essential. And it's, it's a, uh, an energy that springs forth from the very root of consciousness. It's not something that we can buy and sell in the marketplace, um, you know, like, like some kind of material thing. So, uh, we, you know, we don't know in this material world what love is because we have never tasted our relationship with Krishna. 
We have forgotten what that's like. And once a person has tasted that, it's like they lose all interest in the so-called love in the material world. Right? But, but, we, but we are in the material world right now. You are in the material world. Well, well yes. And, and so, and so you're, you're sitting there. Mm -hmm. You're in the material world as well. I am. I'm not going to love to you, by the way. But, <laughs> the, the, the point is, it, it, well... This we, body, we, this, this piece of meat that I use to communicate with you is in the material world. Yeah. But I am not in the material world. I am the soul, I am the consciousness that speaks through this body. I'm not in the material world. I've never been in the material world. Mm -hmm. Self-realization means that we understand the transcendental nature of the soul. Second chapter in Bhagavad Gita. It's like the most elementary thing in spiritual life. Is your consciousness wiggling your meat around right now? I mean, your meat that bag, your... your yeah, that's what I'm doing. Right now, I'm, I'm manipulating this body to make sounds that you can hear so we can communicate. But that doesn't mean I have that much invested in it, you know, I really don't. I used to. I remember what that was like. It was horrible. You know, you're always in fear. Oh, am I going to say something that she doesn't like and then it's all going to be over? <laughs> Ugh. You know, Krishna's love is not like that, you know. Krishna, first of all, knows all about us and still loves us completely, uninhibitedly, unconditionally, eternally, perfectly, with exactly the flavor of love that we most crave, most desire, that fulfills our soul, and the unlimited quantity of that love. I mean, nobody can love us like Krishna. I mean, compared to the, the relationship with Krishna, you can't really call anything else love. It's just a counterfeit. It's just a pale reflection. It's like, you know, if you have one moon, you don't need all these stars, you know? They're just like like a pale reflection of, of the light of the moon, you know, the, or the light of the sun. You know, this, the sun is so bright that it drowns out all the light of the stars. But similarly, the love of Krishna is, is so magnificent, it's so, so incredibly fulfilling that one who tastes it never, never desires to love the ordinary material person again. You know? I mean, of course, we, we love people in the sense that we want to help them advance spiritually and we want to, to help them attain enlightenment so that they can get the same benefit that we have. You know? But the nature of that benefit is that they also discover their eternal love affair with Krishna. And they lose their taste. A person, the symptom of a person who has attained self-realization is that they lose their taste for material enjoyment. That's right there in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. It's like so elementary. It's like the first step, kindergarten in spiritual life. Huh? If a person actually tastes spiritual life, they lose their taste for enjoying material life becomes irrelevant to them. It's like, what do I need that for? What do I need with ten dollars if I have a million dollars in the bank? Huh? That's that's the way it is. It's like you look at this material world, it's like it's like an old worn frayed ten dollar bill laying on the ground. Huh? And I have a million dollars in the in the bank. You know, here I got my platinum visa card in my pocket. Huh? What do I need to bend down and pick up this dirty, torn $10 bill? Let somebody else pick it up. Maybe they'll value it. I don't value it. It's not important to me. I have something better. Much better. A thousand million times better. Well, you know, because it's eternal. It's indestructible. It's unconditional. It's, it's on 24 hours a day. <laughs> you know? What do I need with this on-again, off-again material love? Huh? This is like, it's insignificant. It's like, we just, we just, we don't need this. Uh, you know, I, my personal experience is that, that love making can transcend the physicality. No, it can't. It can't. Okay. Anything that's based on the body is going to be, is going to give results in the physical. Uh, so you may be tripping on endorphins or something. Well, it's an articulation. It's, look, we, look, if I'm going to articulate some visual aspect, like this DLP projector or this, these videos, 
they're an articulation that we use for our ocular senses. So mm -hmm. that, is that a sense gratification? Or of course. That, then it's inadequate. It, it's, it is. Then it's dismissed. It's only a tool for achieving something spiritual. If we can engage that tool in some spiritual purpose, it becomes spiritualized. Like, we can use sex life to create nice children that we can bring up and educate spiritually and, and bring them into the process of spiritual life. That's the, that's the one engageable aspect of sex life in this material world. Otherwise, it, it only is a distraction. Replication. Yeah. Is it just replication? Mm -hmm. Reproduction. Yeah. Make more bodies for the souls to come so that we can educate them and help them. Then we, we may as well do it in vitro and not have some. <laughs> well, that wouldn't give very high class.